Hello guys, David here and welcome back to episode number 7 of Whites on the Rise. In this episode we have our FA Cup third round game against Reading Football Club. Since you were last with us, it's not been going too well. We've been, had patchy form to say the least. As you can see, we're 10th in the table. We're very much mid-table now. We're still 11 points clear of the relegation zone, so we're absolutely fine with that for the time being. Um, Finances-wise, again, looking pretty tidy. We've had no increase in terms of transfer budget. Um, so there's no real chance of us um, improving the squad at any stage. I'll be honest, I don't think at the moment we really need to. And I'll come to why in just a second. Before we open up the schedule, since you were last with us, obviously last episode we had that fairly disappointing uh, pasting from Manchester United. As you can see, obviously we lost there 4-0, which you will know about from Tuesday's episode. Um, we followed that up with what realistically should have been a 2-0 two, two, uh, well, two win, a victory against Tottenham. As you see, we've got goals from Robbie Gotts and Patrick Bamford, both within the first 10 minutes. We kept it going. I then I then actually wandered away for a cup of tea to go make myself a cup of tea. And I came back and Harry Winks had scored in the last minute to deny us the victory, which is really annoying. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, we followed that up with a pretty convincing win against Newcastle, which is always nice. We were actually, it was 2-1 and then we just turned up and just absolutely turned them over. As you can see, Helder Costa getting a hat-trick. Vasiliadis and Shackleton also getting on the score sheet, which is quite a, quite a nice thing to have. After that boxing, I think it's yeah, bo I know the day, the game after Boxing Day rather, we were away to Sheffield United. We should have absolutely battered these t these guys, um, but unfortunately, again conceded to a John Egan header towards the end of the game. I was so far away from watching this game, I actually saw Egan score and celebrating, think celebrated, thinking it was one of our players, and then found out it wasn't. So it looked a little bit silly. Um, and then in the last game, we lost 3-0 to Chelsea, which, to be fair, the, the scoreline makes it look better than it was. It probably should have been a 4 or 5 nil, to be completely honest with you. As you can see, there were 3-0 up with inside half an hour. And Robbie Gotts, who has arguably been one of our better players recently, got on the score sheet again. So it's, it's all right. Things could be worse. The form is not the best, but hopefully we can get a decent win against these guys and then carry on our form into the uh, into the start of into the start of January and for the rest of the uh, rest of the Premier League season, but team for this game against uh, Reading is is fairly changed. There's some familiar names in it. Well, you should recognise every name I think, apart from maybe one or two. Uh, but it's just like I say, just to freshen up the team a little bit. We have got some strength and depth on the bench anyway, so I think we've got some chances to uh, to sort things out if we need to. But anyway, team for this game is going to be Meslier in goal as normal. I was I was going to put Casier on, but he's just so not match fit, and I don't like a non match fit goalkeeper. It's it worries me a little bit. Um, Lewis in defence alongside Kemp, Cock and Dallas are the back four. Dallas has just come to me moaning about lack of game time. So I thought a sensible decision. Put him in the FA Cup game and see how he gets on. A midfield duo of Mateusz Bogus and uh, Calvin Phillips has shifted up from his normal base of the midfield role, as you can see. We're then playing Idrissi, Hernandez and Helder Costa, the supporting three behind Fairly well improved um, centre forward man Joe Joe Gelhart obviously signed him from Wigan at the start of this season and he's not looking like a bad player as you can see making making the making developments in the right areas could definitely do with a bit of an improvement on his fitness um, but otherwise he's looking like a decent player and in fact I am actually going to play him as the advanced forward that he wants to be which is what I meant to do before um, bench wise as you can see we've got all the all the key players on there. Got the likes of Cooper, Klitsch, Rodrigo, Shackleton, Bamford. Could all come on and do a job if we need to. I have left the likes of Vasiliadis, Gotts, um, Alioski and Co. out of the squad entirely just to just to basically keep them a bit more fit. That's the main thing. Um, but anyway, without any further ado, I swat a fly out the way. Let's get in and see if we can swat uh, Reading FC aside and get into the fourth round. That's a link you will enjoy. Anyway, hopefully, i say we can just quite easily get through this. And, uh, and and swiftly move on. I will throw it out there now. I'm hoping this will not be the case. If we do get a replay, I will probably do that in another episode, depending on when it gets booked for. If it's like in the next week or two and there's one game in between it, then I'll probably do it in this episode. If not, I'll do it in the next one and we'll just see how we get on. But I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, to be completely honest. As we uh, kick off the start of the game held a costa on the ball running straight past his man puts ball into joe gelhart and it's within 20 seconds and he's got his debut goal what a fantastic goal that is um he has actually played a few games for us already he's been coming on as a sub 
um, to mix up the likes of Rodrigo, Patrick Bamford and himself. And that's that's a nice little finish, tidy little finish. He's been he's still been playing for the under 23s as well. So he's probably one of the sharpest players in the team at the moment, arguably. And that's the way you want to start the game. Happy, happy days. Got another throw in. Helder Costa puts another ball in. Doesn't manage to get it onto Gilhart's head this time. But Phillips plays a lovely ball out to Jamal Lewis. Puts ball in. Gilhart, the near post this time. And it's 2 0. And it's 2 for Joe Gilhart. This guy, sign him up. Oh, my word. He's just, he's putting this, uh, this Reading defence to the sword. I was actually considering whether I just put him out on loan. But if he's going to play like this every game that I start him from, I'm all for it. Between you and me, I did consider starting him in the Chelsea game uh, a couple of days ago, but I thought probably not the time to start him in a game. He's only 17 years old, bless him. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put him into the put him into the pit into the fire pit too early, do I? So it seemed like a sensible decision. But we're two 0 up within the first 10 minutes, and it could be three, and it is three. And Robin Cox got his first goal for the club as well. Debut goals all around today, and it's three nil with inside 20 minutes. And uh, that whole thing I talked about be, being a two a two game episode, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> be very surprised if it did. Goal kick from Reading goes straight to Helder Costa, who plays it back to Dallas, plays it back to Meslier in, in goal. Lovely ball forward to Mateusz Bogus, who plays it alongside to Phillips. He's got Costa in front of him with loads of space to run into, takes a chance, doesn't really have much on it. I thought he would have played it out to Dallas, who would have whipped the ball in, but he didn't do that in the end. Anyway, it's back to another highlight now. Ball gets played forward. It's Ovi Ajaria on the ball, but Dallas makes a lovely challenge and gets the ball off him. And it's a chance for us to break here. And Gilhart could be in for a third here. Is he going to convert? He is, and it's a hat trick inside 20 minutes on his debut, on his, on his starting debut for Leeds United. That is a fantastic performance from the young man and does give me a lot to think about. I know we're playing against Reading and I know they're a championship side, but. If you can score a hat trick inside 25 minutes against any team, you're not a bad player. And it's 4 0 leads. Look at that 9.5 rating. Give that guy a medal. The only person who's not turned up is Usama Ajisi, which is pretty much what he's not been he's been doing the last few games. Do you know? Since he's come back from injury, he's not been anywhere near the player he was when we first brought him in, which is a shame. Ball in from Reading now. They do nearly make it 4 1, but it looks like Yaku Meite does actually nod it wide of the post. So that's uh, a concern gone. Idrissi has now managed to get onto a 7.0 rating, which is nice to see. I want to see him get a goal. I want to see him get his confidence back. He seems to have lost it since uh, since he's come back from injury. He's focused on the ball now. Wonderful ball forward to Gilhart, who's running forward again. Gets a chance, dis digs it against the defender. Doesn't really go very far, to be completely honest with you. But Idrissi's nicked the ball off of the lurking defender. Gilhart's got another chance. <laughs> Tamely shoots that one to the goalkeeper. Should probably have been four. Anyway, Hernandez at the ball in now. Cock at the back post. Idrissi, he gets the goal I was asking for. It's his ninth goal of the season. I'm pleased for the guy. Like I say, he's not really been turning up since he came back from injury. But now that he's back, he is clearly back and ready to go. I Look at that. Lovely little finish there. He's poked his foot into there. Cox put the ball right back across the edge of the area. And it's a lovely, lovely goal. I'm, I'm quite happy with the way this is going. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll all agree. Look to be strolling into the fourth round. Ball in, but Cox there to be equal to it. Drops back out to Ajaria, though. Lovely save from Mesde. It's the first real opportunity they've had, I would say. And it is a corner now for the Royals. Swift puts the ball in, drops to Morrison, and it's 5-1. I'm not particularly pleased with that, just for half-time. Michael Morrison getting his first ever goal for Reading. Looks like he's becoming very old. Is he old? He's 31. He's not young. I don't think we've got any players. I was going to say we've got any players on the pitch that are over 30, are over 30 but we do. We've got Robert, uh, Pablo Hernandez playing. But anyway, I will tell the boys that was very pleasing. I am tempted to bring off Joe Gilhart very early in the second half just to keep him fresh. And see if, to be honest, that's him, I think, pretty much earning himself a start in the next game that we play. I've got to, got to be honest. And this uh, this 4 2 3 1 is, is doing very nicely indeed. It's another corner from Reading. I'm not really particularly like it is. Michael Morrison's had another goal in the back of the net, but he's not been given because it's been disallowed for pushing another player. And I think that's about time that we drop a bit of praise on the boys. I was going to say I'm going to give him a kick up the ass, but I'm not going to do that. It's definitely time to bring off Robin Cock, though, because he is probably the most um, tired of the players because he obviously has played pretty much every game so far this season in one position or another. 
Um, and I'm probably going to do the same for Calvin Phillips as well. Bring on Klitsch, give him a chance to have a, have a game. Uh, we can put in Bogus as the box-to-box -box midfielder. We'll then shift, shift Klitsch in as the deep line playmaker, give him a chance to do that. And I think for now, that will do. The choice is probably going to be between... I might keep Gelhart on, actually. Um, I'll probably change out Costa for Bamford, maybe, some of that, or Rodrigo, perhaps, just to give a bit, again, just to stretch some legs to the other players, keep the uh, keep the guys fresh. we have got a lot of games coming up. This is normally the part of the season where it's most busy. Idris is going past his man like he's not even there. Lovely run from him. Seems to kind of stop, though, which is a bit weird, and gives the ball up to Lewis, and uh, nothing really happens with it, which is a little bit odd. Highlight continues. Kempf plays it forward to Idrissi again. He plays a lovely ball forward to Joe Gelhart. It takes another shot, and I think it came off the outside of the post. Either that went straight to the side netting, either or, but it was a lovely effort. And I think now it's about time to bring off Helder Costa. And we'll bring on Rodrigo for him. Because again, he's still coming back from injury. He's not fully fit, and he is a left-footed centre forward, so we can play him on the right-hand side and give him a chance to cut inside, potentially, and get some... Uh, Get some goals. I was thinking Pablo Hernandez hasn't really done much in this game, but he has had two assists to his name. That seemed like I said that very weirdly. Yeah. Not looking too bad. I'll take this. A little bit disappointed we've not scored yet. I feel like we should be getting another goal. We've been comfortably ahead of them in this game. and we let, We've lost the sheet, which is disappointing in itself. If you look at the stats, I don't think arguably you'd expect this to be a 5-1. We just scored from every chance we had to begin with at the start of the game. Man City are beating Derby 7-0. I've just seen come up on the printer at the top. Can't see any other any other big moments at the mo in this at the moment. Uh, no one really. Or oh, Millwall beating top, uh, Southampton, which is a, I suppose a big result for them. Otherwise, looks like a fairly standard FA Cup third round. And there you go. That is the end of the game. We've come away with a 5-1 victory. And that, I think, has penciled Joe Gelhart in as man of the match, obviously. And I think we're giving the start at home against Crystal Palace the next game as well. Uh, price, fitness concern. Yeah, I think we'll probably give him a rest for the next match. So we'll do that. Let's go give jo uh, Gelhart. Gelhart a nice little pat on the back. Tipped to the next Michael Owen, apparently. That's quite cool. And there you go. A nice, comfortable win. And we're through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. In terms of the next games we will play, so in the next episode, we will come back for, I mean, it seems like a sensible decision to come back for the fourth round, shall we? Can we find out when that's going to be drawn? When is that going to be? Can I see that? How do I get to it? FA Cup, here we go. Can we see when that's going to be? Stages? Fourth round? Gets drawn in a couple of days. I'm not going to bother about that now, but we'll come back in the next episode for the fourth round of the FA Cup. If you have enjoyed that one, guys, then please make sure you hit that like button. That'd be very much appreciated. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell notification so you can see all the new content's going out on the channel over the near future. And let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comments. Do you think I'm being too hasty in giving Joe Gilhart a start in the Crystal Palace game? Let me know your thoughts on that one as well. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it from me. My name's been David. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Marching on together.